So I've waited a few days to kind of process the information and announcement that Halo Infinite has been delayed until 2021. We don't have a release window. We don't know if it's going to be spring or fall or any of that stuff. And although I am disappointed that I will not be playing a new Halo game this fall, I'm also happy and relieved that Microsoft is willing to give 343 the time to make sure that Halo Infinite is going to deliver on promises, on gameplay, on features, just pretty much the whole shebang instead of forcing them to finish or not finish technically and throwing out an unfinished product to the masses this fall and everybody being like, what the heck happened? It's Halo 5 all over again and it's just dead on arrival. So I'm... I cannot imagine the conversations that Microsoft and 343 had between one another uh, about what is supposed to be the flagship game franchise of the new Xbox console launch, you know, delaying until the next year. I, 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 ugh, it seems almost unfeasible that this could have actually happened. Phil Spencer said that we are disappointed. We know it was something people were looking forward to this year, but we are also incredibly committed to to delivering a great game, and I think that's the best thing out there. And I agree. I, I think that in this day and age, games delaying is pretty much, you know, almost an inevitability. I, I think a lot of studios and developers in the future are going to stop giving hard release dates and kind of be more fluid in, in how they announce games and probably might take the Bethesda approach where they announce, you know, Fallout 4 is coming in a couple months and they only announced it because the game was like practically done and they knew they were going to be able to hit that target. I think there are a lot of positives and negatives in, in looking into this and kind of doing some research and seeing what, you know, industry insiders are saying, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about the slip space engine being held together by duct tape and i hope to god that's not true because this is supposed to be kind of the saving grace for halo and them being able to create content and change the game and do it you know super quick and i uh, i don't know i do hope that this was the right decision i think it's the right decision i hope that they kind of look at the limitations that the original xbox one has um, because that's kind of what they're building their Halo ecosystem around is being able to play literally on any device and to be held back by hardware limitations that are almost, you know, I don't even, almost a decade old now. And what was pretty much a mid tier build back then is it's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. Although I do think that most of the reactions to the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal was pretty positive um i do think that there were noticeable issues especially with the graphical fidelity and i think that that's something that they're going to really work on fixing i i think that we'll see enhanced models and textures and the next reveal trailer i think that they're going to change up how the brutes look i really believe that they're going to add you know hair and and stuff like that i think that what they should do is kind of look at how they can provide the bare minimum in graphical settings for the old Xbox and kind of treat it like a PC environment where you can you can upgrade textures to like low, medium, and high on your other devices and kind of go from there in terms of how they present the game and its graphical fidelity, you know, thing. All in all, I think the delay is good for Halo. I think that... It's catastrophic for the Xbox console because it's kind of like, what are people going to buy? What games are going to be coming out that people are going to want to buy an Xbox console for? Um, you know, Fable and all that other stuff, Elden Ring, none of those games are coming out this year. So I think that it's a huge blow to the Xbox environment, but it might just be more of Microsoft not really caring as much about their consoles as much as they care about people playing their franchises on any device. I do think that PlayStation has a stronger lineup of launch titles, like the new Spider-Man with Miles, God of War uh, 2 or 6, or however they're doing it now. 
you know, they're gonna have the new Last of Us. I, I, I Grand Theft Auto. Like, there's so many. Even though those are like shared, you know, games on different consoles, but there's so many single player type of games that are gonna be out on PlayStation that it almost makes getting an Xbox kind of irrelevant. But what's really kind of scary to me is that Halo Infinite has been in development for like six years now. Um, I know that some of that time was spent on the engine. It's terrifying. They've pretty much restarted twice because they they said that they scrapped what uh, the the story campaign was going to be after Halo 5 because of fan feedback. There's the rumored $500 million budget. They've lost a lot of key employees. I I don't know if the game is in development hell or I I just don't know at this point. All I can do is hope and pray that it's a good game and that it delivers and it's something that we want to continue to play for a long time. That's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.